Dawn Slayer and I'm here in a very special place indeed. I'm standing on a beach on a small island in the middle of a vast ocean. On the land the ground is ruled by the world's largest terrestrial crab. In the waters abundant sea life like nowhere else in the tropics. The sky teems with seabirds. This is the Chagos Marine Protected Area and this is its story. The beautiful islands of the Chagos Archipelago in British Indian Ocean Territory. Long sandy beaches, forests, nesting seabirds, giant crabs feasting on coconuts. There are no native mammals though. That is because this scene was not nearly so tranquil millions of years ago. Violent volcanoes built up these islands in the middle of the Indian Ocean, raising rocky peaks above the waves. But if you walk the peaceful islands today, the last thing evident are raging eruptions. So here we are in the Chagos Archipelago. These islands very much were volcanic in origin. But if you look down at the bedrock on which I'm walking today, you can see there is a very different process in action now. Look at that. These patterns are emulated just off the beach. This is a fossilized coral head. In fact, you can see the patterns of the coral polyps in the skeleton. This looks like it was some sort of a brain coral. And if you look across over here, this probably some sort of a opera branching coral. So these islands, once violent and volcanic, are now linked to a far more beautiful and subtle process. The growth of the coral reefs, which you can see just offshore. As the volcanoes became dormant and died, the peaks they had raised eroded and sank back beneath the ocean waves over the eons. As they cooled, corals began to grow on their rocky slopes. They built up reefs that grew towards the surface as the mountains sank away. So now the patterns of the polyps of the corals are echoed in the rocks beneath your feet on the islands. But step away from the rocky ground and more often than not you'll find yourself on the white sand beaches for which atoll islands are famed. So, we're now on a beach and although you wouldn't think it, this white sand beach is very closely linked to the coral reefs as well. It's not just the bedrock of these islands. In fact, just about everything about these islands has to do with the sea. So if we look down at the uh, sand that I'm standing on, this fine, fine white sand, very soft to the touch. You can see little red flecks in it, little blue flecks, mostly white though. This is coral as well, finely ground coral powder. So these beaches are part of the coral reef as well. And these white sand beaches wouldn't be here if it weren't for the reefs. And there's a very interesting process that leads to the formation of this powdery white sand. I think that's what we should go and take a look at next. We'll take a short trip just offshore. There I'll get my gear ready. On with the fins. And the mask. A few deep, deep breaths. And down into the cool, clear water. Into the depths. 
beneath me, myriad corals growing up towards the surface. You'd expect that the corals would grow all the way to the surface, but they are constantly being broken down. Storms and wave action break the corals down from above, while boring animals and sponges break them down from within. Fish also play a large role in this process. Butterfly fish and surgeons eat away at the surface, but the largest ingestion of corals is by the parrotfish. They're often seen singly, scraping away at the reef, but can aggregate in huge numbers. Their vibrant colouring and large bony beaks earns them their comparison to the colourful birds of the jungle. They use these beaks to bite into the rock-like structure of the coral, taking away chunks of coral tissue and skeleton where the coral is alive, or algae and coral skeleton where the coral is dead and has been overgrown. This keeps the corals healthy by removing the algae which compete for space on the seabed. But it is not the coral skeleton that offers the fish nutrition. Their stomachs digest the soft flesh or plant material and the remainder? A fine powder of calcium carbonate coral skeleton is excreted. This fine coral powder excrement can clearly be seen as curtains of grains falling gently behind schools of swimming parrotfish. Vast amounts of fine sand are produced in this way and collect in drifts. Currents wash it about and eventually in some places it breaks the surface to be blown by the wind, covering banks of coral rubble or palm tree roots to create the white sand beaches that we love so much. Although it is kind of amusing to think that we enjoy sunning ourselves on mounds of parrotfish poop. Once the islands have been established, the waves constantly wear against them. Where the waves crash against the shore, it is too violent for corals to survive or sand to settle. There is another very tough organism that prevents the islands from being worn and washed away. It is an algae that coats these rocks in the wave zone. Known as coralline algae, it coats the bedrock that is exposed by wave action and holds itself in place by laying down limestone. This lends the algae a pink colour and literally glues the shore together, building up over tens of thousands of years to create long foundations or spurs that extend out into the sea. These structures break the power of the waves far away from the islands, protecting the shores above sea level from erosion. The islands here are dependent on a thriving coral reef for their continued existence. Healthy reef fish populations are needed to keep the corals healthy and keep the sandy beaches covered in fresh drifts of coral powder. Healthy corals must keep growing towards the surface to prevent the islands from sinking beneath the waves. And healthy crustos coralline algae has to be there to break the power of the oceanic waves. The British Indian Ocean Territory Marine Protected Area fosters the healthiest, most prolific reef fish populations in the Indian Ocean. Due to the area's protection, the corals and coralline algae here are amongst the healthiest and most resilient in the world. But they are still threatened by the global situation of ocean acidification and oceanic temperature rise. Temperature rises can kill corals in a process known as bleaching. How many times can they bounce back from these heating events? Global temperature increases are being fueled by carbon dioxide emissions. Ocean acidification is another result of this pollution and it will eventually also kill corals and coralline algae.
While current protection measures have ensured that the Chagos is the most beautiful and healthy of coral atoll environments, there is still far more work to be done on these global issues to secure this treasured place for the future. Learn more and see how you can get involved at www.chagos-trust.org.